Well, I got the technology part worked out so we can get back into it here. Uh, we're getting close to the end of the course, so stick around. Um, I want to thank you guys for putting the time in and once again, welcome you to the, to the world of real estate. So let's get back into some more marketing tips, um, some more info here. One of the questions that you should be asking yourself is, I sell what? All right. What do you actually sell? Please, please, please don't sell a commodity. What you want to sell is a value. People don't buy stuff. They buy solutions. There's an old Sigmund Freud called the uh, pleasure principle. People do two things. They either buy to avoid a pain, like food, or they buy to get closer to pleasure, like a better car. Okay? That's the only two reasons people act, is to avoid pain or to get closer to pleasure. You do that by selling value to yourself. Don't sell a commodity. If you come in and say you sell title insurance, that is a commodity. Here's a hint that maybe you don't know. Most of the premiums are set by the state anyway. So it's not like you're going to come in and undercut another title company in price by 40 or 50 percent or even 10 percent. So you better find a way to sell value to an agent or to the lender or even to the consumer out there because they want to buy value. They want to get something that they that has a value to them not a commodity okay now so sell yourself why are you so good what's your value do you have marketing uh, real estate marketing services available can you help me as an agent get more business now i don't know how you're going to do that that is up to you all right if you come in and start talking about, well, our enhanced policy versus our standard policy, who cares? Honestly, and I'm just being honest with you right here, because that's a commodity that all of them sell. You know, you've got an enhanced policy, Chicago Title does, so does Security, so does King Bird Title, all of them. But what's different about you? How are you going to sell yourself to convince me that you are going to be a better fit for me and my business model than someone else's and their business model? Um, that's going to involve maybe you getting to know me before you even try and sell. All right. We're not going to get into a big sales class here, but there are things called the two step sale. The two-step sale is for the first time, you're not even coming in looking for business. You come in, you meet me. Hey, what does the modeling group do? Who are your agents? What do they specialize in? Do they specialize in golf course lots? Like I specialize in investment property. Oh, really? Well, I was an investor, so I can speak the lingo. And I've got a couple of good ways to, you know, contact uh, rehabbers. Okay, now I have an interest rather than you telling me that you've got an enhanced policy for your title company. Okay, so don't sell the commodity, sell the value. The question is, what's your value? I don't know. <laughs> I often joke, uh -huh. here's, here's, this is an easy business, like real estate's an easy business. In the world, there is no magic button, okay? Let me see, this, this trick will actually translate to your business. <clears throat> I cannot give you the magic bullet that's going to make you successful. But what I can give you is the magic question that you need to answer. All right, you ready? Here it goes. And if you're at home, you might want to write this down because here's the magic question. And this works true if you're a mortgage broker. It works true if you're a real estate broker. And it works true if you're a title broker. 
which in essence, that's all you are, okay? The magic question is this. When someone says to themselves or their spouse, honey, I think we need to buy a new house. I want to contact my realtor named blank. How you get them to remember your name is the key factor in this business. Period. That's it. It's called top of mind consciousness. When someone says, I want to buy a new house, I better call Raymond to represent me. How did I get them to remember that Raymond was the name to call? That is the golden magic question. The button or the bullet is more etherical and it's up to you. Now, for those of you that remember, maybe you remember the real estate monkey that did the radio talk show. That was me. All right. If you remember that, I've done my job. If you haven't, then probably you haven't heard it in a while. I've been off the air for a year or two and I'm thinking about going back on. But the key was, I was the guy that was always doing the radio show, the talk show on WXNT, and then it went to Freedom Radio, um, and I still do uh, blog, or podcast, actually, but that's a very crowded space. There were many people that heard my name that got used to hearing my name on the radio, so they would say, hey, I need to call that guy on the radio. What's his name? Raymond? That's what I did. Some people put bulletin boards up, right? How about those uh, grocery carts? I'll tell you right now, there's a girl in Bloomington. I know her name. Never met the young lady, but she, her face is on every uh, card. It's uh, Teresa Szynski, all right? Maybe if she's listening to this, I, I, I can get a bonus a gold star for the day because I remember her name because she's on every one of the uh, grocery carts, and as you're pushing your grocery, you're staring at her name for 30 minutes. Is that how she does it? How do you do it? All right, so the magic bullet I can't help you with, but the question that you need to answer is when an agent says, oh, I've got a new listing, i got to order my title, I need to call, Badoom. how do I do that? How do you make me, make yourself memorable to me and not just one of the other 1,700 title reps that have come through my door saying, we've got an enhanced policy and a standard policy, and we give good customer service. Okay, who cares? Right? First of all, we know that most title insurance is underwritten by four companies anyway. You've got Fidelity National, you've got First American, Stewart Title, and Old Republic. Now, there's some others. There's one called Conestoga, I believe. But what I'm saying is, in the long run, they're all going to end up at the same place anyway. So I want to know more on how you're going to help me create my business and streamline my process so that I can be faster, I can get more clients, I can get higher price clients, any of those. Um, so you need to sell your value, not your commodity. Everybody's got the commodity, all right? Now, with that being said, I'm going to tell you. Sorry, i got to take a drink of coffee. A lot of you guys at home hear a big pause. It's not that you've gone deaf. It's just that I'm resting for a second trying to take a drink of coffee. There's actually two kinds of title reps in this business, all right? There's a marketing rep and a sales rep. You need to decide which one of those are you going to be, okay? Now, before you decide, let's talk about them. The marketing rep, the marketing rep is a title company rep that comes and just does marketing for the title company. They always have something to market for the title company. Usually, it's, you know, postcards or flyers or rate schedules. And they're all branded with their company name. And there's some cute stuff out there like jar openers and coffee mugs and fly swatters, um, leather embossed binders, all right? All of that stuff. This position exists to make real estates aware that their title company is in existence. Marketing reps love to talk about their title company. 
So if you work for a smaller title company, then yes, some of your job may be a marketing rep to actually get your new title company's name out there. Your job as a marketing rep is to assist the real estate business if I know exactly what I need, all right? If I know what I need already, then a marketing rep is okay. <clears throat> if it's something else, um, let's talk about the other one, the sales rep. The sales rep, while the marketing rep exists to market the title company, a true sales rep exists to help me increase my sale. So a great sales rep is going to come in and ask me questions so that they can understand my business. Am I a listing agent? What's my ideal client? Do I have a market area, either in a financial area like investors or high end, or a geographic market like the South Side? You know, are you on Facebook? What's your Facebook uh, domains? That's actually not it. Domain's not the right. Well, domain would work because they'd also go want to know your website. So you see what they're doing? They're gathering information, and you guys need to gather this information from a realtor so that you can help market his business for him. And market's not a right word because I don't want you to confuse it. Help sell for him. And they're going to sit down with you and they're going to ask questions and they're going to go over a plan. And the plan might be to grow your company business or it might be a plan that's specific for a piece of property. So you've got to understand that they have a marketing rep and a sales rep. Now, I'm not saying that one is better than the other because in some cases, marketing is important if you've got a smaller company that's new to this area or it's a brand new company that's just started and you may need to get your name to me so that I know that there's a, and I'm going to make this name up, Pelican Title. That's a good one up. I don't know why I thought of that. But that would involve some marketing on your part to get us to know who market Pelican title is, okay? Now, once that sales rep, i.e. one of you guys come in and talk to me, you're going to want to make sure that you probably spend 80% of your time working as a sales rep, getting to know me, getting to know my agents, getting to know how we work, what we do, how you can help us so that you can help our business grow because the more you help us grow, obviously the more business we're going to be able to refer to you. Now, the question just came up and I know that, hold on, don't, let me answer this and I'm sure it's going to be your question. Which one do you want to work with or which one do you want to be? Well, we kind of just touched on it a little bit about it. You actually need to be both, all right? You need to be both a marketing rep and a sales rep to serve a valuable purpose to us. While the marketing rep is an asset to my business so that I understand who you are and your capability, the sales rep is an asset if I don't, if I already know your business and I just need help growing, then a sales rep. So part of your key is to find out which one I'm looking for. And you might start off with a simple question. Hey, I'm from Pelican Title. Have you heard of us yet? No. Okay. Now let me go into a marketing mode. And I've got some pins here with our name on it so that when you get in that position and you forget about us, here's how you remember us. All right. So there's that. The sales rep is going to ask me about my strategies for selling real estate. Do I use videos? Do I use uh, drone pictures? How, what social media platforms uh, are, am I on? And how I tie all of those together to drive a client to my, my website. So that's what the sales rep's going to try. There are plenty of order takers out there that just come to me all the time and they're like, hey, I don't understand why I'm not making a, a good living or better out of this business because they didn't understand. So understand which one you are. Are you a marketing rep? Are you a sales rep? Are you going to get in the business of marketing? 
or when should you get in the business of marketing and when should you be in the mark business of sales rep? Both of those are important. All right. Well, once again, we've done it. We've run this audio file. Seems like time goes by quickly. So we're going to switch audio files again. Hold on. And hold on. And hold on.